My name's Fred, by the way. I don't really feel like a guest minister in the house. I feel like sort of like an awkward cousin. Um, You know that dude that rocks up to like family dinners and doesn't really do anything, but he's just there eating food? That's me. Uh, So it's good to be here. Uh, My name is Fred. Uh, I am 31 years old. I am super married and uh, I am espresso elated uh, to be with you this morning. I think we have a photo of my gorgeous wife. There she is. Look at her. She's beautiful. Like, you know how every pastor's like, my wife's so hot. <laughs> like, some of them, I'm like, eh. But, like, with me, and also the fact that I'm like, don't get me wrong, I'm not down on myself. I'm probably like a, out of 10, I'm probably like a 6.5, but I dress good and I'm funny. So maybe a 7, like on a good day, on a good day. But, yeah, anyway, she's the love of my life. We've been married nine and a half years. Uh, and that little tummy uh, is not because she's been having Cinnabons. It's because she's going to have my baby girl uh, in August, uh, which I'm pumped about. I think last time I was with you, we were still believing and praying for a miracle. I believe some couples, even in this church, uh, prayed with me after the service. And so, praise God, ready for sleepless nights and um, ready for a couple months off as well. So, that's me. Now, what we're going to do this morning, if it's okay... You might need to start my timer. I mean, you can keep it on 40 minutes if you want. We'll just keep him here until 1 p.m. But um, we're going to read through the story of Pentecost, and I want us to grab some practical things from it. Because if you don't know, you're in a Pentecostal church, so we believe in speaking in tongues. We believe in, uh, you know, the power of God moving. But I think sometimes we can come to church and hear about stuff like Pentecost or anointing or unction or the oil, and we just do this. We're like, hmm. But if someone was like, what does the anointing look like in, our, in your personal life? We'd be like, I don't know, <laughs> the peace of God. When you're ever in doubt in church, just Jesus or the peace of God is a good answer. <laughs> what does that mean from a theological standpoint? Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is the answer. But I want to delve into the story of Pentecost. And so what I ask is we're going to read a chunk of scripture. Is that okay? Like, I, I promise I'll be like funny and tell stories afterwards, but we're going to read like, A big chunk of scripture. And I don't want to baby you, but at my church, if we do that, I have to kind of let them know that they'll be... It's kind of like, remember when you were little and you didn't want your vegetables? And your mum and dad would... I don't know, maybe maybe my parents are weird, but they'd fly the plane to make you eat the vegetables. I'm going to try fly the plane (laughs) to make you eat your vegetables. And that's not a payout on you. I'm the same. When the Lord's like, Fred, today I want you to study the scripture. I'm often like... I'm just being honest with you. I'm like, for how long? (laughs) All right, shut up. Let's read the Bible. Um... Acts 1, who has a Bible? There was two at the 8.30. Who has a leather-bound Bible? The head's going down. (laughs) I've got my Bible. If your Bible can be charged, it doesn't count. All right, (laughs) Acts 1, and we're going to start in verse 4. And while staying with them, this is Jesus speaking, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait. Someone say, wait. For the promise of the Father, which he heard, which you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, Not many days from now. So we know that that part of the Bible is Jesus talking to his disciples saying, hey, it's better that I go because I'm sending you something better. I'm sending you the helper, the comforter. Let's skip forward to chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost arrived. It's today. It's exciting. Two people are excited about that. I didn't realize in a Methodist church. They were all together in one place. Not that there's anything wrong with Methodists. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled. Not some, not the pastors, not the people that had done Bible college. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Aren't you glad sometimes that the Spirit gives you utterance? Now that we're dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews. I love the Bible sometimes. It's just very. And dwelling in Gold Coast, we're Gold Coast people. <laughs> Devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. This is often what I call the forgotten miracle. We, we love, obviously, the tongues of fire and the wind in the upper room. But hundreds of th- thousands of people came. And all could understand what was being said. It's a miracle. Because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are these not those who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we can hear each of us in his own native language? Okay, here we go. Parthians and Medes, Alamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phryga and 
Pam- I thought it said Pamela. <laughs> Phryga and Pamela. Egypt and other parts of Libya belong to Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans, Arabians, Vegemites, and Nitsubishis. We hear them telling in their own tongue the mighty works of God. And they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said they are filled with new wine. Can I tell you, even at Pentecost, there was, there was haters. Even at Pentecost, when God poured his spirit out, there was people that are like, nah, it's not real. I don't want to be in that crowd. That's the only line in Acts those guys get. I want to be part of the Acts of the Holy Spirit, not someone that looks back and looks on and goes, oh, is that real? Is that true? But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. I love that line so much. Translation. They're not drunk. It's 9 a.m. It's too early. Even for belly heads, it's too early. (laughs) Skipping forward to verse 22. Peter preaches a sermon. He says, Men of Israel, hear the words, Jesus of Nazareth. I love this. I love that after the most powerful encounter the world had ever seen, Peter talks about Jesus quickly. A man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know this. Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men, but God raised up. Skipping forward to verse 37. After the sermon, when they had heard this, they were cut to the heart. The NSAB says they were pierced to the heart. And Peter said to the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I mean, last bit of scripture. We're almost there. Skipping forward to verse 42. And this is after the day of Pentecost and, and after 3,000 men, so probably four or 5,000 people had been, just, just process that for a second. In one day, 100 people in a room get filled with the Spirit. And the byproduct is that that day, a mega church was formed. Let's be pumped. We should all just get filled with the Spirit right now. And then next week, Elevation Gold Coast will be bigger than everyone. So many jokes going on in my head, I can't say. All right. (laughs) And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul. I want to be someone, the awe of God is on my soul. The breaking of bread and awe came upon, and many signs and wonders were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. They weren't arguing. They weren't bickering. They were together. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. I don't know if tithing's biblical. Friend, tithing is tithing's Old Testament. It is Old Testament. Tithing's the start. Ten percent's the start. Like we're arguing over ten percent. Jesus wants your whole life, your whole bank account. I know this never gets any amens. (laughs) And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. Who loves to receive food with glad and generous hearts? Some of you right now are thinking about receiving your food in an hour with a kind and generous heart. Jesus, we thank you that you're here. We thank you that you love this church. You love this city. You love the people of the Gold Coast region. Father, in the next couple of minutes, I pray you would use an ordinary man and an ordinary message to encourage, exhort, guide and empower and equip your people, myself included, to go ahead and see good works in our world. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You did awesome. That was a big passage of Scripture. Well done. I want to grab some points from the story we just read that I think could be helpful to us today. The first point I want to grab is what Jesus says to them. He says, go and wait. Don't you hate it when Jesus says that? I'm not good at the go and wait. I'm not a go and wait guy. I'm a go and go guy. Anna sometimes looks at me and this slight pained expression crosses her eyes and she goes, why do you have so much energy? Or she says this to me, we'll be out and we'll be at a dinner and I'll be getting excited or telling a story. She'll tap my leg under the table and I'll look at her and she'll go, you're just being a lot. (laughs) Which I think is very rude considering I am the head of the household. But, But I am. (laughs) but I'm not good with go and wait I'm not good with that one I like it when Jesus says go and do this go and do that I don't like the go and wait have you ever been in a waiting season where you're waiting on a breakthrough you're waiting on a miracle maybe you're just waiting to hear from God you've been praying and you're waiting I hate it I know that in the four and a half years it took me and my beautiful wife to get pregnant there was many times I felt like I was in the upper room waiting 
watching my wife have to stab herself every night with, with IVF needles and have to go through that process, spending $30,000 on, on medical practice uh, whilst traveling and preaching about the healing ministry of Jesus. A, a, a few times, I'll be honest with you, I was in my room and I said, hey, hey, are you, did you forget about me? I know you've told me to go and wait and be patient and that your, your timing is perfect and there's a season and a time under heaven, but, but God, I'm getting impatient and I'm starting to doubt and I'm starting to worry. I'll take it from the silence this morning that maybe you've been there too. Maybe some of you are there right now. Where it's like, hey, hey, Jesus, hello. Or, or you know those seasons where you're waiting and it feels like everyone else is getting the thing you're waiting for? <laughs> you know, it's the worst. You're sitting there and you're like, God, thank you, you're going to give me a husband. And all these single girlfriends, it's like just keep disappearing one by one, finding all their Boazes. And you're there and you're like, hey, Jesus, I'm still ringless. Like, you know. Help me out. Maybe it's a bit more serious than that. Maybe, maybe you've been trying to have kids or, or maybe you're waiting for a healing or maybe a, a, a son or a daughter's walked away from God and it's like there's all these testimonies everywhere online about people coming back and the prodigal son and you're like, what about my family? I want to encourage you this morning. I think sometimes the greatest revelation, the greatest breakthrough often happens after we've waited. The most powerful encounter in the Bible happens after they go and they wait. Not the most exciting point, I know, but hopefully it helps someone. Point number two is that unity brings power. It says when they were all gathered together in one accord. They were upstairs in a Honda. <laughs> Some of you will get that at lunch. You'll be like, oh. <laughs> Psalm 133 says, how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured out. Pentecost invites us into a place of unity. I'd go as far as to say, as Spurgeon himself said, revival doesn't fall on a church that doesn't like each other. We get divided over anything and everything. So I mean, I don't know if I agree with that. Well, firstly, we just got divided. <laughs> Secondly, look at COVID. I'm going to be super honest. I need to be careful because the 10, 15 gets recorded. I love our church. Our church is awesome. We've gone from five people to about 600 by the grace of God. God's building something. My dad's a senior pastor there. We're having a good time. It's great. But then COVID came along. I mean, dad, we're in India uh, preaching at the Bible college because we're very holy. And um, I'm just kidding. And um, like, this guy's a bit arrogant. And um, we got word of the COVID. And so we, we, we headed home and we got home and live stream wasn't a problem. We did that. All the stuff we had to do, it was fine. But what we found is very quickly... <laughs> our church turned on each other. Yeah, it's getting quiet, huh? <laughs> People walking in with their masks. See someone without a mask and it was like... <laughs> <laughs> People in corners in the foyer. Did you hear? They didn't get the jab. Why do they hate everyone? <laughs> You're laughing because it's true. We are unified by the blood of Christ. We're unified by Jesus himself. We're unified by the cross of Calvary. And yet we get shaken a little bit. And I want to emphasize, I've preached at the underground church in China. What happened here was shaken a little bit and we all turn on each other. Yet it doesn't even take a pandemic to do that. We'll turn on each other about theology. We'll turn on each other because someone got to worship lead and we didn't. We'll turn on each other because we just don't like the way they kind of vocalize things. Revival does not fall on a church that's nitpicking each other. Revival falls on a church that's together. And together doesn't mean you agree on everything. It's impossible. I'm in unity with my wife. Doesn't mean we always agree. I want to help you this morning. You don't have to agree with everything in this church. You don't even have to agree with everything that's preached. What did the Apostle Paul say? I rejoice that Christ is preached. If Jesus is lifted up, let's go. Love it. We've got to be unified doesn't matter if the pastors are unified if the whole church is angry at each other and un there's bitterness and unforgiveness and and clicks and clicks it's not going to happen we want the holy spirit to move sovereignly we want revival in our nation but we won't forgive that person the holy spirit doesn't just make you cry and shake and fall over he makes you shut up examine yourself and apologize he makes you do the things you don't want to do Okay, moving on quickly. 
I thought my two points, first two points were a downer. And so like, we're going to bring it up. The Holy Ghost draws the world. Point number three, a multitude of people gathered. This is, cr- this is awesome. Th- just, 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 Fred, breathe. Just picture this. <laughs> picture this. There's a revival meeting going on. Well, actually, there's not yet. It doesn't say, people sometimes think that they were in the upper room, like, which they wouldn't have done because they didn't have tongues yet. So thank you, Jesus. You know, but they weren't. They were just up there for days on end. They could have been doing anything. They were probably like doing their hair, playing Monopoly. I don't know. And it just says, and suddenly. Don't you love the and suddenlies of God? <sighs> Comes into the place. Peter looks at Luke and goes, Mary goes, what did he say? Mary goes, your hair's on fire, Matthew. Matthew goes, Mary, your hair's on fire. Don't you have hairspray on? Wind starts going. Like this wasn't a chilled out event. And Jesus didn't tell them what was going to happen. This would have been crazy. (laughs) What is happening? Now to make it even better, they all start speaking in unknown tongues. There's cloven tongues of fire on their head. Wind is going everywhere. It's a serious fire risk. And then Peter looks outside and there is thousands of people from all nations gathered outside going, what's happening? God God didn't just do this to fill them. He did it to show them. It's great that they got filled. But it was for a purpose. The Holy Ghost draws the world. Leonard Ravenhill said, you don't have to advertise a fire. If this light here fell and landed on that seat and there's no one there it would have been funny if there was someone there but if it landed and for some reason that seat burst into flame and for some reason fire just took off what would we all do we would all look for the green man i'd go out that way front kicking people to get out of the way i'd be like i've got a call eh? get away <laughs> throwing women and children out of the way Nah, i'm joking i'd let the children go Go outside. But something else that would happen is even though, and we all survive in this scenario. Everyone survives. The kids' ministry got out. It's all fine. The cafe didn't make it. (laughs) We'd go outside and if it was a big enough fire, the whole church was on fire, there'd be people filming. Traffic would slow down, wouldn't it? Just to see what's going on. Because you see, a fire attracts people. I don't know what it is. There's something macabre about it. There's something interesting. How did it happen? Be full on. The ambulances, police out there, you'd all be crying, oh, my baby, you're safe. Glow staff would be out there ready to invite people in. <laughs> a bit, bit powerful. <laughs> Just serving the body of Christ. You don't need to advertise a fire. When we started our church, <laughs> when we started our church, we had five people. Someone say five. We had five people, a cajon and an old keyboard. A cajon is a drumming box. I played it one service. It was terrible. You sit on it. Sorry for that image. We had five people. We were at a a hotel function room on the fifth floor. We didn't have a name for our church. Didn't have the best worship. Didn't have any screens. Didn't have anything. I thought about buying an overhead projector. I used to be that guy at my church when I was young. Do you remember that? Overhead projectors, like a rose, trampled on the... And then you're on the overhead, you're like, yeah, nailed it. (laughs) He took the fall. Anyway. But we did have the Holy Spirit. We literally had to... We would go down on a Sunday and invite people from the restaurant and the bar. Say, do you want to come to church? We had a guy full on drunk one time. Like, I'm talking drunk. He was was like, yeah, I'll come to church. (laughs) Went upstairs. In, in worship, he became fully sober, gave his heart to the Lord. You, I love LED screens. I love them, like too much. I love comfortable environments. I love black paint. I love lattes. Sometimes people like to, to see a revival. They're like, we don't need any of that stuff. Um, yeah, but if we can have it, let's. I'd prefer to sit in the aircon. But it's not the thing that draws people. The thing that draws people is his spirit. The thing that draws people is supernatural solution. The people of 
Gold Coast, the people that have been clubbing and are broken and are, are tearing their soul apart whether they know it or not. Yes, let's have aircon and a good environment and excellence, but more than anything, when they walk in with addiction, pain, abuse, trauma, let's make sure we've got more than just some songs. Let's make sure we've got a river. It says in Revelation, there is a river. Therein makes glad the city of God. Let's make sure Elevation Gold Coast has a river. And I know it does, but it's not about the staff and the worship team. You can make that river bigger. You can bring your praise. You can bring your faith. Don't just bring a worship frisbee. Don't just bring a hand in the pocket. Bring some faith. I'm telling you, I I, I don't want to sound weird, but I love looking at YouTube videos of of gospel churches in America because they just get it. Like in the middle of praise and worship, a sister will just be like, praise Jesus and just start dancing. I'm like, why don't I do that? Partially it's because I've got no rhythm. But there's a culture in those communities of I'm going to praise God with all I am. I'll become even more undignified than this. Let us never in the West, let us never in Australia take for granted the cross of Calvary. Let's not come into church with a hand in the pocket and impress me, Lachlan, which he does weekly. Impress me, Isaac. Impress me, Pastor Mark. Impress me. No, no, no. Let's come in and go, even if the worship is dog's breakfast and even if the sermon makes no sense, Jesus is here. I'm going to be pumped. I'm going to clap. I'm going to stand. I'm going to bring my praise, my shout, because I'm not just a sheep being fed. I'm a spirit-filled believer. Yeah. And whether I'm a pastor or a one-week-old Christian, I can bring my faith. Yeah. Sorry for getting excited. Next point, it is for all people. It is for all people. The Holy Ghost is for all Christians, but it's for all people. I love how... Dr. Luke, when he's writing this book, he's intentional with listing 15 different cities and nations and tribes and tongues. And this is just after one Pentecostal meeting. The Holy Spirit's for everyone. The Holy Spirit doesn't make me better than you. He makes me better than me. We as Pentecostals are not elitist because, oh, we've got the Holy Spirit, brother. And there's Baptists. They don't know what they're missing. No, no, no. The Holy Spirit makes you better than you. You don't need the Holy Spirit to go to heaven. Jesus Christ is your advocate. He is the propitiation for your sin. You need the Holy Spirit to bring heaven here. Heaven is our destination. Heaven on earth is our assignment. Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this. Kingdom come, will be done. Good luck bringing heaven in your humanity. I suck at bringing heaven. I'm terrible at it. You know why? Because I'm a human. <laughs> I'll wake up and I'm like, oh, I'm going to bring heaven to earth today. I feel like the Holy Spirit being like, can I come? What? Of course. Please. He's a gentleman. He doesn't force himself. We've got so many Christians. Can I speak honestly? I know we're having fun this morning, but we've got so many Christians who, who have not seen fruit in their life for years. And it's not because they don't love the Lord. They love the Lord. It's not that they don't want to see their family saved. They want to. But it's been so long since they've been filled. It's been so long since they've had a refreshing. Psalm says, I will be anointed with fresh oil. Yes, there's one cross, one baptism, but there's many infillings. I was ministering in Atlanta at uh, one of Bethel's satellite churches in 2011 at the, at the youth ministry there. And they asked me to preach on finance. Now, I was 19 and had $10,000 in credit card debt just to get the trip. And I'd done one of those stupid things on Facebook, like, God's sending me to America. Like, can anyone give me some money? It's like, whenever I see them now, I'm like, get a job, though. But anyway, <laughs> I did have a job. I just needed more money because of my credit card debt. It's not important. And they asked me to speak on finance. And I'm going, okay, like, like it's Bethel. Like, can I speak on, like, the glory or fire or levitating or something? And I'm just kidding. And um, so... I spoke at this youth ministry, pretty small youth ministry about finance, and this guy walks in halfway through, sits up the back, and he looked about 25, so he wasn't youth age, and he just cried the entire sermon. And it was a bad sermon. That's not why he cried, but <laughs> it was bad. I was like, you know, because Jesus gives us money and we want to be the servant with the talents and, you know, you know, lift your hands to heaven. At the end of the service, I went up to this guy and I said, brother, what's going on? And he said, well, he said, I've never been to church. He said, I, uh, I'm gay, and I was on my way to a brunch, and I was walking past the building, and a voice told me, go in there, you'll be set free. 
He's like, I had no idea what that meant. So I came and I sat down. He's like, I could tell it was a young person's event. That's why I sat at the back. And then he began to tell me about through the whole sermon, the Spirit of God began speaking identity, saying that, that he was loved, he was valued. I said, bro, this is amazing. Do you want to invite Jesus into your heart? He goes, it's probably one of the coolest moments of my life. He goes, I already did. I said, when? He said, Jesus said to me, as he was talking to me, do you want me to come into your heart? And I said, yes. I checked in with the pastor years later, married, kids. What's my point? First point is God uses us despite of us. Second point is the Holy Spirit is for everyone. For everyone. But how are we meant to give him to everyone when we don't have him? How are we meant to give? How is a dry church meant to give a city the oil of God? Just a thought. Next point, we're almost done. Maybe, Brother Keyboard, you could come and play minstrel. Thank you. Encounter always points to Jesus. I know you know this, but Jesus is our message. Jesus is our great hope. It's all about Jesus. It says in the Word of God, just as one man got us into all this, one man got us out. It's all about Jesus. And I love that after Pentecost, the first thing Peter preaches is about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Encounter must lead to Jesus. If I can be honest with you this morning, I've been to churches where it's all about miracles. It's not all about Jesus. It's all about manifestation. It's, it's not all about Jesus. That's not what we're chasing. But what's so beautiful is in the person of Jesus and in the person of the Holy Spirit, there is, there is manifestation, there is miracles, there is healing, there is breakthrough. But we're not seeking that stuff. We're seeking Him. But in His presence, there is fullness of joy. There is freedom. And he who the sun sets free is free indeed. I was just suffering for Jesus in Bali. Just spent a week in a villa in Bali. And um, it was awesome. That was a joke, by the way. <laughs> just, everyone's like, wow, it's amazing, bro. <laughs> and, uh, and I was there and Hillsong Bali asked me to minister. I wasn't meant to, but they said, would you come and do two hour service? It was a great move of God. They had their biggest Sunday on record. They had over 2,000 people across four services and... Um, I preached the four and the six. We saw 50 first-time salvations in one of the services. God's good. Yeah, you can give God glory for that. But something happened at the 6 p.m. that I just wanted to highlight for you and, and tell you about. This, this, I did a word of knowledge after the 6 p.m. And I just said, I feel like someone's injured their hip and their lower back. And I felt it was from a car accident or a scooter accident. I said, Some, a motor accident has happened. And three, three people came forward and ministered for them, prayed for them. They got slain in the spirit. God moved. But after the service, a lady ran up to me and she said, Pastor, when you gave that word, that's me. I was in a scooter accident. I came off my scooter at like 60 k's an hour and crashed into like a signpost and I crushed my hip, my hip flexor, my lower back. I've had sciatica ever since, severe pain. She's like, God told me to respond to your word, but I was scared. I haven't been to church in a while. I've been doing things I shouldn't. She actually told me she'd been engaging in the occult because that's quite common in Bali. Doesn't work at church, go see a witch doctor. And so... I said, wow, that's, that's crazy. And she said, but as you laid hands on the first lady, she's like, I felt heat in my hip and my lower back. Like someone, this is her words, was pouring hot oil onto it. She's like, so I went up the back of the church and I started testing it. She's like, I started walking back and forwards. She's like, and I'm completely healed. She's like, for three years, I've had excruciating pain. I've had it like a stick. She's like, and she was showing me, she was walking back and forth. Then this is the part that's cool, even though that's awesome. She grabbed my hands and she said, would you pray with me that Jesus would come back into my heart? And what I love is that the encounter led to Jesus. It says in the Bible that, yeah, you can give Jesus praise for that. It says in the scripture that signs and wonders are for what? The unbeliever, not for us. God wants to heal your bodies, but that's not the main thing. I've, I've prayed for a lot of people whose leg and back and arm have been healed and they've used that good body to walk straight back into hell. He wants to heal your body, but more than that, He wants to free your soul. Encounter always leads to Jesus. Two more points, then we're done. You okay this morning? It gives us the power to pierce. It gives us the power to pierce. What does it say? Once again, we're going through this story bit by bit. After Peter's sermon, it says that they were cut to the heart. The NSAB says they were pierced to their heart. And they said, what must we do? That's just fruit falling off the tree, isn't it? What must we do to be saved? What must we do to be filled with the Spirit? Peter tells them. Sometimes I think 
friend, we don't evangelize or outreach or step out of the boat. It's not that we don't want to see our world changed. It's that we're not confident that our words will land. We're not confident that when we pray for our family, it'll work. Have you ever prayed for someone, Christian or non-Christian, and you can tell it's pierced their heart? Isn't it the most beautiful feeling? Not because it's about you, but you're like, yes, Jesus. But I think the fear of that not happening and getting the blank look, which I've gotten many times, it holds us back. The fear of rejection. Can I tell you, I, I, not as much as I'd like, I pray for people in Westfields a lot. The two main places God makes me, and yes, makes me, pray for people outside of church is Westfields and aeroplanes, and it's the worst. I've been doing it 10 years. I still get nervous. I get sweaty. I stammer. I'm not smooth at all. But I've been doing it long enough to know that Jesus will give us the power to pierce. I was at Telstra North Lakes in November last year getting a new phone. And um, this girl Tiffany was serving me and she had red or purple hair. And I was signing up. You know, you got to tell them what your job is. She's like, what's your job? And I'm like, oh, I'm a pastor. She's like, is that like a priest? I'm like, I guess. She looks at me and goes, you're the weirdest looking priest I've ever seen. I was like, well, thank you. <laughs> She goes, all right, I'm going to get, get your phone. She's a, she's a live wire, man, big stick of gum. Goes out the back and God says to me, pray for her boyfriend. I'm always shocked when God speaks to me when I'm like out shopping. I'm like, huh? He's like, pray for her boyfriend. I'm like, now? Also, is he here? God's like, you're an idiot. Just pray for her boyfriend. It's like, all right. Didn't want to. I still wrestle with God. I was like, oh, it's awkward. I just want to get my phone and leave. She sits back down. I'm like, excuse me, can I ask you something? And this is an example of me not being smooth. She's like, yeah. I was like, um, do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> she goes, uh, yes. I was like, no, 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 super married, 31, a little bit chubby, like, it's fine. I said, no, I just, I feel like God's told me that he's going through something. Is your boyfriend going through something really hard right now? She goes, straight away she starts crying. See, Jesus will give us the power to pierce. I said, let's pray. I put my hand on her shoulder. No word of lie. She'd never been to church. She puts her hands out like this, sitting on those weird tall stool things. We start praying. I see the manager looking over. I see customers being like, I hate it. I'll be honest. I'm like, ah. I said, Lord, thank you that you love Timmy. Thank you that you love the word. Thank you that you're above it. Blah, 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 blah. Finish praying. I didn't say, oh, that's me just telling you I prayed for a bit. And then I ran away. I felt so awkward. I was like, thank you for the phone, bye. I get out of the store and God goes, you didn't lead her to me, you idiot. I was like, oh no. And I fought it, hey, like I almost just took the nugget and bailed. But I was like, oh, so I went back in. She's like about to be with another customer. I'm like, Tiffany, Tiffany, it's me, it's Fred. <laughs> Can I borrow you for a second? Like I think I'm being smooth. The whole store's like, they probably all thought I was shooting my shot. I was like, Tiffany. She comes back. I'm like, I totally forgot. Do you want to give your life to Jesus? No word of a lie. She goes, who's Jesus? I was like, yo, the culture is not where I thought it was. I said, well, he's the one that told me about what's going on with your boyfriend. He loves you. And he's, he's kind of like, he's God. And, and he cares about you. She goes, he's the one that told you about my boyfriend? I said, yeah. She goes, absolutely. I go, dang it. She said, Yes. So I grab her hands in the front of North Lakes Telstra and I prayed a pretty quick prayer <laughs> with her. Do you accept Jesus into your life? We believe that he died on Roman cross. He died for your sins. Do you accept him into your heart? Propitiation for your sin. Amen. Bye, Tiffany. <laughs> I just run. <laughs> God will give us the power to pierce. Pentecost is not just a thing we celebrate as Pentecostals. It's an invitation to kingdom efficiency. It's an invitation to, hey, church, go out and do something. And I don't say that like with an annoyance in my tone. I say that with excitement because what would happen? You don't need to be awesome. You don't need to be amazing. You don't need to have a Bible college degree. You can be a bit unsure, a bit sweaty and a bit chubby and God will still use you. Introverts, you don't, you don't get out of it because you're an introvert. The Enneagram isn't in heaven. There's sons and daughters. The Holy Ghost doesn't fall on like type threes and, and, and extroverts. He falls on all people. 
and you might not loudly say something. You might go, hey, I'm just feeling like... You'll probably actually be better than the extroverts because we get all sweaty and loud and intense. All right, I'm almost done. I've gone too long again. Everyone shush. Pentecost (laughs) leads to repentance, submission, and generosity. We look later on. What does it say? They submitted themselves. They repented. They got baptized. Then it says they submitted themselves to the apostles and the teaching. There's a submission to the church and then there's generosity. There is the manifestations of Pentecost and then there's the markers of Pentecost. The manifestations, and we love it, falling over, crying, uh, uh, healing in bodies, creative miracles, speaking in new tongues. Then there's the markers of if anything's actually happened. Repentance, submission and generosity. Let's not just be Pentecostals that love the manifestations, but we have no markers. Would you stand with me this morning? You okay? You alive and well? He's okay. Praise God. I'd love to pray with some people this morning. I believe that... Can I prophesy over you? I believe that this church has great days ahead. Great days ahead. You got, you got everything. You got great people. You got 74 LEDs. You have one of the great creative pastors. You have brilliant leaders. Pastor Miles and Bonnie are beautiful, humble leaders. You're in an amazing movement. The problem is you don't have any excuse. You got good coffee. You got good aircon, And I love that. Let's bring the world. Let's bring them in. Just quickly, I want to check that everyone here, before we go into ministry time, I just want to check that everyone here can um, say that they know Jesus, say that they're a follower of Christ. I'm not asking if you've been to church. I'm not asking if your mom or your dad were a Christian. I'm asking, do you right now have an active living relationship with Jesus? You might have walked away. You might have never said this prayer. I don't know. But if that's you, if we could all just bow our heads and close our eyes. I just want to check that everyone here knows Jesus. And if you don't, I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. But if you would like to commit to Jesus or recommit to Jesus, you know you've walked away. Just quickly, right now in this moment, I'd love you to give me a wave and put your hand back down if that's you. Just quickly. We just always want to give a space. If you're in this place, you say, Fred, that's me. I want to come back to Jesus or I want to give my heart for the first time. Just give me a little wave. If that's you. A couple more seconds. I don't want to miss the moment beautiful how good is that we all know Jesus we're all going to heaven we're all going to hang out with each other forever forever that's wild I'll pray for you guys I'm pretty annoying we're going to hang out forever I love to pray for some people Um, I believe Jesus wants to move I believe a couple of things There's some people in this place that you know you're called to pray for some people in your sphere. Might be family, might be bosses, might be co-workers. And you have felt you, when you feel that unction of the Holy Spirit, you are paralyzed by fear. You know God wants you to start making an inroad. You know God wants to, if that's you, can you just wave at me? If you're like, that's me. I know God's calling me to make an inroad in my, in my office, in my family. Thank you. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I'm just going to pray for you corporately. Great, 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 great. Anyone else here up the back? Great. Now what I'm going to get you to do, because boldness is the first step, is I just want you to do this. Two hands in the air, if that's you. I'm just going to pray. You're going to stay in your seat, but we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Come on, I'll give it a bit longer. There was more. Good, good. Father, I thank you for these people. And I thank you, God, that you're instilling a kingdom boldness. I thank you, Father, that we give you thanks ahead of time for the miracles. We give you thanks ahead of time for the words of knowledge. We give you thanks ahead of time for the souls that are going to be one. Father, all fear, go in Jesus' name. We thank you for boldness, 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 boldness. Father, that the urgency of eternity would come upon them like never before. In Jesus' name. Hey, thanks for joining with us today. Why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with any future videos. And we'd also love to connect with you every Sunday right here live online. And also if you'd love to connect with us in any other way, head to our website or our social media. We'll see you soon.